It isn't too late for a two-state solution, and bringing the land into focus proves it. When talking about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the West Bank settlements are a central issue. Some argue they are the major barrier to peace. Others claim they are a distraction from more fundamental issues of recognition and terror. Groups on the left and the right both point to the growth of Israeli settlements as proof that any peace deal involving transfer of land is impossible. But are they correct? Do the facts of Israeli settlements make impossible the idea of an independent Palestinian state? Do they spell the end of Israel as both a Jewish and democratic state? The answer is no. To be sure, compromise would be difficult, and it would take political will. But new data shows it's possible. Developed by the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, Settlements and Solutions is an interactive website using advanced mapping technology of the West Bank and Israel. It provides the most up-to-date view, showing precisely who lives where, down to the most granular level of detail. Facts cannot be divorced from politics, but these maps allow anyone to see the issues at play in concrete terms. For example, a lot of people focus on the total population of settlements and not their geographic distribution. But these maps show that 85% of Israelis living beyond the lines of the 1967 war live within just 8% of the West Bank and East Jerusalem. These are the lines of Israel's security barrier, erected to stop a wave of Palestinian suicide bombings. For a two-state solution to succeed, the vast majority of the settler population need not be relocated. Seeing it mapped out, brings to life the potential for peacemaking through land exchanges or swaps. Now, take settlement growth, which is also a key issue. The population and demographic data in our maps show that of 139 settlements in the West Bank, just two, Beitar Elite and Modi'in Elite, account for almost half of all growth due to the high birth rate of ultra-Orthodox residents. Crucially, these two settlements fall just east of the Green Line, the demarcation line created after the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. Allotting these West Bank communities to Israel in a potential land swap shows, again, that for a two-state solution to succeed, the vast majority of the settler population need not be relocated. The future of the communities who are beyond the security barrier remains to be decided by the negotiating parties. But settlement growth is a solvable issue at least for now.